Hey y'all, we are checking out today uh, applications of vectors in 2D and 3D. With my 3D glasses, I can see them in 3D. Everything looks 3D with these things. Might be just because everything is in 3D. Um, so that's out of uh, thir chapter 13 A and B in the text if you'd like to cruise along with it. Um, but basically we're just solving problems and a high physics application, which is why I like it. Um, but uh, so you, you could you know think about a lot of these things as vectored uh, uh, forces maybe or accelerations or displacements. Um, but if you were to pull on you know put a force on this box and put a force on this box in two directions, um, some of their x value would cancel out. If they were equal, it wouldn't move laterally, but their uh, y values would combine. Cool. So you can start thinking about vectors in that sense, um, combining them. Uh, one of the things that they use vectors a lot for, and actually I used uh, sailing, was is a an object moving under its own power through current or through a, a fluid, moving fluid. So if your Zeppelin, your airship, is just sitting there and the wind's moving at 30 kilometers per hour, the ship should drift at 30 kilometers per hour, right? Um, if, it's, if, it, if there's no engines. So if you put some engines on it, and now it has uh, some forward um, momentum under its, uh, of its own power. If there's no wind, right, if this doesn't exist, it'll just move straight under its own power. But if there's both, it'll move somewhat forward, but at the same time get blown by the wind. So it'll move in a, a diagonal direction, right? So one way you can visualize that is this like that and say, all right, well, we have a partial, uh, we're partially going forward and partially going over, and so it drifts diagonally. Great. We did this with um, current and tides in on sailing all the time. Um, so uh, let's just jump to it and try out a problem. They're all really similar. Uh, we have a, uh, in still water, uh, Jacques, um, maybe it's, I don't know, Jacques Cousteau, there's Jacques Cousteau, uh, look him up if you don't know him. Um, Jacques can swim at uh, 1.5 meters per second. This is a notation for meters times, that really means meters per second, right? Um, great. And so Jacques can swim at 1.5 meters per second in still water. He's trying to swim from point A to B, but there's some current, okay? so. We're going to attack this in pieces. The first part is if Jacques swims straight or points straight, not swims straight, but points his body straight, um, which way does he actually move? Which way does his body move because of this drift? And how fast is he going to go? So um, we're going to attack that first. And then we want to know if he actually wants his body to move in a straight line, which way does he have to point so that the drift... Sorry, which way does he have to point so the drift makes him go straight? Um, so maybe to visualize this, you could think about him uh, swimming in a straight line um, here. And so he would, maybe well, let's, uh, let's call him this blue, green dot. And if, he's, if there's no current, he just moves predictably forward. But if there is current, he moves some forward, but then the current blows him a little bit downstream. Right? And then he moves some forward, and the current blows him downstream. Current blows him downstream, and eventually he makes it. But he, he makes this sort of diagonal path. Um, so we're going to try to use C as the current's velocity, and S as Jacques' swimming speed, and F as the final overall velocity. So let's take a look at that on this page. So if this is if Jacques aims directly down, uh, directly across. Jacques' body is pointing directly across. So here's Jacques, and we should actually t turn him, or maybe her. And if she's swimming directly, uh, uh, pointed straight across, she gets blown uh, downstream or pushed downstream a little bit, even as she as she moves straight across. So that's her that's her uh, final vector, right? So um, we know a couple of these components, right? We know that uh, this is Jacques' swimming speed. And we know that this is the speed of the current. So really, we have all the components to find uh, f. <clears throat> and it's just um, using Pythagorean theorem, basically, right? 
you know, to, to work with the vectors. So you know that her, his or her um, swimming speed is this piece. It's 1.5 squared. Uh, is that, yeah, 1.5 squared. And the current is 0.5. You square those and you add them. And, and so that's your final uh, velocity after you've taken the square root. Well, so the, after you take the square root, then 1.58 is her overall speed, his or her. And that makes sense because she's getting some extra speed over ground because of this current pushing her a little bit, or him. Yeah? Fine. If we want to find the, uh, the angle from the intended path, we want to find that angle, theta, we can just use tangent, right? And tangent, all tangent is, is the opposite over the adjacent. <clears throat> if you've already found this, you could use any of the trig functions. But um, to remove the risk of hitting a miscalculation, use the things that we're sure about, which is opposite 0.5, this one, and adjacent, which is 1.5, right? <clears throat> so you'd use inverse tangent, and you get about 18. Cool? So then you'd answer the question. Bam. Okay. The second part of the question was this. Jacques doesn't want to drift downstream. There's sharks or something like that, right? So um, we, he, he or she has calculated that swimming, pointing straight across will result in him or her, her uh, sliding downstream. So you have to point a little bit upstream to counter the current, right? So then uh, we want to figure out, um, what did they ask us? They said, what angle and how fast will it be? Okay, fine. Well, we have the same things going on, except our components are in different spots. This current is still the 0 0.5. And Jacques can still only swim a certain velocity. And it's the velocity that his or her head is pointed, right? So this is still S. Even, now it's the hypotenuse, but it's still, it's still S, which is, it was, what, 1.5, something like that. And so all we have to do is rearrange our visual and say, all right, well, the angle, oh, we're looking for the angle first, huh? Um, the angle is this angle, right? And they're using sine because we have opposite and hypotenuse. And those are the two that we're sure about, right? They've given us those. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. You take the inverse sine, you get about 20 degrees. So Jacques could point about 19.5 degrees upstream, away from perpendicular across, <clears throat> excuse me, and that's uh, the angle that, in which he should, should point so that if he points that way consistently and swims, he'll move a little bit up, but then the tidal blo or the current will blow him back on track. He'll move a little bit up, the current will blow him back on track, and eventually he just swims straight across. So we've just found phi. This is phi. It's like theta. <clears throat> Great. So uh, neat, but what's the velocity, right? Because you're swimming somewhat upstream, some of your speed, some of your velocity is burned off countering this current. Well, we can find that velocity. It's just this length of this vector. And it's, it's still just a right triangle, right? And we know this is 1.5 and the, the hypotenuse, and this is 0.5, and this is f. And we don't know what that is. It's a right triangle, so you can turn it back into Pythagorean theorem and say, uh, well, I know that the hypotenuse, this is just a squared plus b squared equals c squared, the hypotenuse is his speed. Uh, that should equal the current squared and the um, forward speed squared. And you simplify it, it ends up being like 1.41. I guess it's root 2. Um, cool. Try that out. Make sure you're comfortable with the mathematics behind that.